am the Midnight Cat, the youngest Jellicoe, born on a fateful night, this you should know, when the day has lost all its light and all its glow, came the birth of little Joe, the youngest Jellicoe. The moon is calling me to the Jellicoe. I am the youngest of them all, you see. Two weeks later came the Jellicoe ball, and I am here to answer the call. Jellicoe moon shining bright, give me your powers here tonight. Jellicoe moon shining bright, help me to fight for what's right. Turn off your cell phones unless you want to hear our hisses and groans. Turn off your cell phones unless you want to hear our hisses and groans. And I shall be greater than the greatest of them all. So join me now. It's time for the Jellicoe Ball. And the overture shall begin. And that is how cats that be, uh, should be, and that is how you should do an introduction of a Jellicoe production. You really should not do the introduction of a Jellicoe production, you see, it's a Jellicoe thing. Jellicoe cats come out tonight, Jellicoe cats come on, come all. The Jellico moon is shining bright. Jellicles, Jellicles, come on, come on. Jellico cats come out tonight. Jellico cats come on, come on. The Jellico moon is shining bright. Jellicles come on, come on. You know the poem. Now for a little history lesson. Little Joe the Moonlight Cat was born on May 8th, 1987, which was a Friday. And if you've seen Angela Weber's production that was videoed, the video at the Adelphi Theater, there was one uh, headlight on the train. At the Red Lodge production, there were two headlights on the train. I shall use this, uh, this gingerbread as an illustration. Little Joe was this headlight. We built our chain with two headlights, not one. And uh, in a previous video, I have shown that the original color was burgundy brown. Uh, let's see, it was this one right here. This was Little Joe's original color. This was his original color, right here. However, Jellicle cats are black and white. Jellicle cats are rather small. Jellicle cats are merry and bright and pleasant to hear when we cat a wall. Jellicle cats have cheerful faces. Jellicle cats have bright black eyes. We like to practice our airs and graces and wait for the Jellicle moon to rise. Jellicle cats have cheerful... Uh, If you've seen the video, you would notice that 
these gloves, like uh, these for their paws. Little Joe is the only Jellicle to wear a cape that hangs over his shoulders like a drape. He wears a collar that is green, so don't be around when he is mean. We are very... I am very particular about my jellicle. He wields a wand known as Mistopheles, the mystic wand. It is a very powerful wand indeed. It helps little Joe gather his powers at night. Quaxo does not need a wand, but uh, little Joe does. It helps him with uh, trying to defeat Miss in a cavity. The monster of depravity. As was not seen when uh, the Jellicles run off stage, there's a little uh, sort of uh, play I've written about little Joe going after McCavity. He still is looking for that surprise of a pitfall. He is the one he despises most. McCavity is the one little Joe despises most of all, and he still is looking for that surprise of a pitfall. I've written two plays. The Jellica Bar, which is sort of a, which is a after story of what happens when the Jellica Ball is over, and the Battle of Macavity, which takes place when the girls are doing their little song and dance thing. And they're doing their little McCavity, McCavity, the monster of depravity. Little Joe's chasing after McCavity. And, uh. And so it's like a strap and, uh. Mega Strap is. Mega Strap chases after McCavity as well. Let's see. It took us a full school year to put on our protection of cats. As uh, we we were the first uh, school to, as, as I understand, we were the first school to do it because, uh, as everyone knows, schools cats was not meant for schools. Uh, Little Joe has patches of black and white alternating like phases of moonlight. When the cape is taken off, this is what Little Joe looks like. Wherever the patches are black and white, on the black in front is white in the back. If it is white in the front, then it is black in the back, with the exception of his paws. Those are 
I'll go swipe right in front, right in back. And his hind paws are black as well. And his tail is one solid color, black. His front is white, his back is black. Little Joe is very much in love with Rumpel Teaser, a very beautiful crowd pleaser. One white dove with a head of black and fourteen dots run across its back. Two brown eyes, the tail between, and two red lips. Meant just for me, Rumpel Teaser is her name. Stealing and prowling is her game. She's a calico, this you should know. She hangs out with little Joe. Rumpel Teaser is a brat, just as much as the Moonlight Cat. Her laugh is so shrill, it'll give you a chill, and the way she says her name gives me a thrill. Mungo Jerry is her brother. With them as a duo, there is none other. Little Joe is their friend. And now, my friends, this is the end. Created by moonbeams from up on high. Little Joe is a jellical. You cannot deny. So. It's Little Joe, the Moonlight Cat. Now, what a brat is the Moonlight Cat? He's always ready for. A Fight. So always lock your doors at night. The moonlight cat is such a brat. He'll start a fight with any cat. All the cats are way too smart to fight this young one with an art. He will start and he will end. He is one to defend. Little Joe, the youngest jellical you should know, has patches of black and white, alternating like phases of moonlight. He wears a mask that of a coon and is mysterious as the moon. His diet is mouse and grouse and he is the terror of the house. He wears a collar that is green. So don't be around when he is mean. He knows when to scram and get out of a jam. But trouble will still follow him when it can. He's king of the hill and has strong will. But will never ever get his fill. 
is witty and very cunning, you will always see him sunning. His back is black, his front is white, and he's the terror of the night. He will also eat a rat, and that is why he's the moonlight cat. Anyway, the um, room in which we did our studies, we did part of our studies in the Crystal Cave, and then the dancing part we did in the Civic Center in Red Lodge, which was, what's kind of interesting about Red Lodge, Montana, is that all three schools share the same cafeteria, only one cafeteria, but three schools, and one gymnasium for all three schools. One cafeteria, one gymnasium for three schools. You have the you have the elementary school, which is kindergarten to third grade. Then you have the junior high school, which is fourth grade to eighth grade, and you have the high school, which is connected to the elementary school via the um, cafeteria. And all three schools share the same gymnasium, which is the civic center. And the Kind of looks like the Hall of Justice from uh, Challenge of the Super Friends. So that's uh, what uh, you're looking at, Red Lodge, Montana. It's a very small town. Really gave birth to the youngest child in the family. Can't complain too much. I am the young I am the moonlight cat. They call me little Joe. The youngest Jellico you should know. <clears throat> I am the moonlight cat. My name is Little Joe. I will always start a fight, you see, with another Jellicoe, aka McCavity. So you always better beware of me, the Moonlight Cat, the Moonlight Jellicoe. Jellicoe Moon shining bright, give me your powers here tonight. The wind has a, its way to speak to me. Jellico moon shining bright, help me to fight for what's right. But I do believe this version of Little Joe belongs in all productions of cats. As he is the youngest Jellico. Let me take you through the birth process. As you all know, Cats started out as a book by Thomas Stearns Eliot, Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats. I credit Old Possum as the very first father of Little Joe, even though he was dead by the time Little Joe was born, he is still the first father. And the first mother is his wife, Valerie Elliott. I credit them as the first father and mother of Little Joe due to the fact that 
they were co-conspirators of that book. Enter a young composer named Andrew Lloyd Webber. As I mentioned, the video, Cats. Andrew Lloyd Webber had grown up listening to T.S. Eliot's work throughout his life, and he met Valerie Eliot at Sidmonton Court, and uh, she gave him a, and they had this uh, concert for her, and then she gave him another poem, and then that spelled theater for young Mr. Weber. And Katz was born on May 11th, 1981. I was five years old at the time. Or at least the embodiment of his form was five years old at the time. Little Joe had not been born. Little Joe was still waiting, but uh, he was, but I do credit Angela Dweber as being the second father of Little Joe. Due to the fact that he had gotten the rights for cats. And then in 1984, young Joe Ryan, by name, heard of cats, a young seven year old, eight year old, had heard of cats. And then, three years later, became the Jellicle you see before you. Because of Gynema Low. In 1987, on May 8th, 1987, Little Joe was born because Katz was brought to Red Lodge, Montana. So, if it hadn't been for T.S. Eliot writing that book, and then Valerie Eliot giving the rights to Angela Weber, Gynema Lowe would have never done Katz in Red Lodge, Montana on May 8th, Seven, and I would have never been Little Joe, the Moonlight Cat, the Jellicle, you see before you today, and I probably would have never found my poetic niche. So, thank you, Angela Weber, and Trevor Nunn, and Jillian Lynn. And I posthumously thank T.S. Eliot and Valerie Eliot for my creation. And I do hope to, that people do put Little Joe on the stage and take my introduction into their production.